Sudanese political, activ political activist and analyst Khulud Kaya is in New York during the UN General Assembly to lobby for more international support for the victims of the conflict. And earlier I asked her to, for her take on Perta's exit. Um, I very much hope that it will improve the ability of the United Nations to engage. Um, the fact that uh, Volker Pertus lost the confidence of one of the belligerent parties means that he wasn't able to execute his duties. Um, uh, and therefore, hopefully bringing in a new person uh, with a clean slate who would be able to engage both parties to push for a ceasefire and a mediated solution out of this um, should be good news. Overall, how would you characterize um, the international response to the, the battling between the RSF and the army in Sudan. I think on the whole, it's, it's not an exaggeration to say it's been quite poor. We have seen uh, the emergency response be routinely under uh, finance and underfunded. We have seen almost a complete withdrawal of many uh, humanitarian actors and also an inability to engage with uh, the, the dynamics on the ground. Currently, it is not humanitarian actors in the traditional sense, INGOs and NGOs, who are able to offer humanitarian support. It is the emergency response uh, rooms that have been created by civilians to help each other. The UN, particularly WFP, the World Food Programme, needs to work with these emergency response rooms and other sorts of similar structures to make sure that the aid is actually delivered to where it needs to be. And in your estimation, where, where does it need to be? You know, I think a lot of the conversations that we've had uh, are about the damage being done in Khartoum. We've also touched upon a bit of the, the ethnic elements of the, the conflict in, in Darfur. What is your understanding of, of how the conflict is being played out at the moment and where you think needs the most support at the moment? Uh, well, the whole country, in, fact, if in effect, is going to become a very large humanitarian uh, crisis zone. Right now, we're seeing much of the fighting concentrated in Khartoum and across the five states of Darfur. Uh, there, has been, there have been serious access issues for humanitarian organizations to be able to get into these places, particularly Khartoum, which geographically lies right in the middle of Sudan and therefore away from a border, which may help to get aid in. To be able to get um, aid delivered in Khartoum, uh, these organizations have to work with uh, local structures to be able to do that. But effectively what we're seeing is an ethnicization of this conflict by both belligerent groups, the SAF and the RSF, which means that we may see civilians pick up arms and this really turning into a civil war rather than a conflict between two parts of the military uh, infrastructure in Sudan. Once that happens, uh, getting a ceasefire in place is going to become infinitely harder and getting um, access to these humanitarian zones will also be infinitely harder. So we're also here to press for a full nationwide embargo, extending the one that already exists on uh, Sudan, uh, in Darfur, excuse me, the arms embargo, and to make sure that there is a deterrent to some degree, coupled with other measures including sanctions, that will enable uh, some of these arms that are flooding into the country from all sides um, to stop flowing in and to really stop this from becoming much more of a, an emergency and a disaster than it already is. As you said earlier, this is becoming very quickly a forgotten conflict, but we may see it become infinitely more difficult and infinitely more challenging as the weeks and months progress. And do you have much faith that there may be some chance of, of securing a negotiated uh, resolution to the conflict? So if you look at Sudan's history, there's been, first of all, a very long history of, of these kinds of conflicts uh, between the central uh, army and other groups, whether they're paramilitary groups or rebel groups. And in every instance there has been before, and there have been many, uh, there has never been a conflict that has been resolved through a military uh, victory. All have been resolved through a mediated settlement. And this conflict is unlikely to be very different from that. And so if we know that's roughly the historical trajectory of this conflict, effectively we're wasting time um, by allowing the both either side to entertain a military victory when we know very well that there's very unlikely to be one. What this means is that the international community, rather than waiting for one side to get leverage or, or some kind of military advantage over the other, they should be seizing the opportunity to press upon both parties that they must put their weapons down and put leverage on the table, not just asks, not just demands, but real leverage, financial and otherwise, on the table to pressure them to um, go towards a mediated settlement as soon as possible. Because what we're seeing is that the, the, the impact on civilians 
is, is, is frankly apocalyptic. We're hearing large numbers of people, particularly women and children, um, in, facing malnutrition, facing famine, facing all sorts of human rights abuses and, and, and otherwise. What we also would like to see is a protection of civilians' force. That is already part of the UNITAM's mandate, and therefore um, the ground is already laid for increased uh, attention to this file, uh, but we're not seeing any movement on that at all.